people what's happening welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video guys first things first make sure you smash the like button subscribe if you're new around here and as always leave your thoughts in the comments below and Chelsea have a point, agreed to appoint Enzo Maresca on a five-year contract, just waiting for that formal announcement now. All agreed between the two clubs, uh, the staff come in as well, just the compensation to be sorted out. And then he will be signing on the dotted line to become Chelsea's next manager, leaving Leicester after just one season. I'm delighted to be joined by Football London writer and Leicester fan Josh to get the lowdown on Maresca, his style, what Chelsea fans can expect. Um, hey, thanks for coming. Really appreciate it. I guess my first question is before we sort of discuss how he might do at Chelsea is he went into a difficult scenario at Leicester, just been relegated uh, under Brendan Rodgers. Not a great feeling surrounding the club. A difficult situation for him to head in as a very inexperienced uh, young coach. Just, just how big was his impact at the club, certainly in those sort of first few weeks and months? Because that's a difficult place to find yourself in. Yeah, I think Enzo deserves quite a bit of praise for how he started the role. He, I think if you can remember, Dean Smith took over from Brendan Rodgers. And then when the relegation was confirmed, he was up there to take the job um, full time. And then we had Scott Parker coming as a favourite. So we went from Dean Smith, Scott Parker to an unknown in Enzo who... Everyone, a bit like you Chelsea fans have saw that he used to work under Guardiola and that's probably the when the first thing you get excited about. So that's the, literally the same boat that Leicester fans were in. Um, and I think it took about three weeks until pre-season started. And then in the first pre-season game that fans saw, he had one behind closed doors against Peterborough, which they lost. Um, but then in front of fans, they played Northampton away and you could see instantly that he got his ideas across. Um to maybe players who we didn't know would be at the club. There was Ricardo Pereira, who we had no idea would stay. Um, Ricard, um, Keenan Dusbill as well, who had come out and said he wanted to stay, but we knew that he was ready to be in the Premier League now. So we we were kind of hesitant he would still be at the club, but you could see his ideas were coming across quite early on. And then I'm pretty sure you saw the clips of the Liverpool in the pre-season when Leicester passed them off the park in the first half hour. Uh, lost the game 4-0, but... Enzo and the fans and even the players have come out since and said that that first half hour gave them enough to realise that they were going to go and win the championship title. And they did. Um, I'd, I'd be naive and stupid to say that it was all brilliant and all perfect. There was the minor dip in March, but it was very quick that he got his ideas across. And with better quality players at Chelsea, I have no doubt um, that he'll be able to do it. I know there's some Leicester fans who think he'll probably struggle at a bigger club, but I think I, I think you'll be fine. I think you you you've got the best of a bad bunch, um, so I think you made the right appointment. Yeah, I, I, I would agree in terms of the, the managers that are out there. I mean, it's quite surprising with the greatest respect to the managers that were on on that shortlist. That that was a shortlist for Chelsea managers, considering the kind of the names that have been appointed in the past. I think it's very clear now that not just Chelsea, but a lot of football clubs are not really too fussed about a manager's CV. It's more about how they play the game. Uh, you know, how they come across and whatnot. You see company going to Bayern Munich, which his CV doesn't really warrant going there. And I guess Maresca's something similar here. But in terms of his style of play, obviously quite possession uh, heavy, um, rigid positional play. Um, every, everyone talks about, as you mentioned, that the Pep Guardiola Association. How similar is his style to Pep? Or, or is he very much kind of forging his own way? I think it's probably a split of the two. Um, I think it's very, very, very easy to draw comparisons between the pair because you've got what Pep's done with his his fullbacks at City this season with like um, Gavardio has been something that football's never um, witnessed before. So Leicester didn't really get that, but the sense of having a, a wing back in Ricardo Pereira or, and the occasion Hamza Chaudhry and then coming into midfield, that was the big one. Um, but and this doesn't get spoken about as much as it probably should, but I think the wingers, how Enzo had um, Steffi Mavadidi and Abdul Fattawi playing was very similar to what we saw at Man City. So you had Phil Foden on the right, who was a bit like Mavadidi, where he's a bit more calm in his play, looks to drive inside and play balls into the middle, then kind of feed off it and then get the ball back. But Abdul's pretty, Abdul Fattawi's a bit more, not reckless, maybe a bit erratic in his play. He likes, he likes to receive the ball um, to feed run at his man and then um take him on or get the get the shot away which he did get a bit not complaints from Enzo but he did make jokes countless times in his press conference how Fatu would does that in training all the time so when you when you see him coming in his left foot um you just know he's going to shoot and he only pulled off a few there's the one at Bournemouth in the cup and then the one in the 5-0 win over Southampton but them two are the big comparisons it's probably difficult to 
to maybe comment on the striker because we we kind of swapped between Vardy, Dakar, Tom Cannon, and Ianacho throughout the whole season. Um, but Vardy Vardy's quite renowned for his off the shoulder of the last defen- defender, and that changed completely under Enzo. He dropped in a lot more. Never really been good with his feet and like back to, to goal, but he, by Mark May he looked unbelievable and. There was, there's calls even now, and I still think he will stay at Leicester because he's still got the ability to do so. But that's down to how Enzo trained him to become a, a good, maybe not a deep line forward, but someone who can drop in and then turn quickly on the pace. So I think there's a lot of things that he's probably took from Pep Guardiola that he implemented with us, and I fully expect him to implement, implement that with Chelsea. And, and in terms of him as a, as a character, as a personality, obviously he's going to have to be quite thick-skinned uh, coming in at Chelsea. Uh, I mean, I'm sure the media pressure at Leicester was was to a degree. It won't be as much as it is uh, with Chelsea. Not just, I mean, from outside uh, external media pressure as well as from you know local press and all that sort of thing. What sort of a character is he, and how do you see him dealing with that and making that step up? Because I, I, I've seen a few things about him. He's not afraid to speak his mind. He's not. He's he's can be quite fiery. Um, I think there's one interview that he'd done after a game, which I can't remember. That if you know if fans weren't happy with what he's doing, then he's happy to just walk away. Um, is he is he quite outspoken? What, what what can we kind of expect from his personality and his character? I think yeah, you hit the head the, the nail on the head there. I think he's quite a fiery character when he kind of asks a lot. He answers a lot of questions pretty simple and gives you the answer that you fully expect. Um, obviously, his English is not he's like one hundred percent natural language, so sometimes he probably gets the question wrong and then answers it in a complete different dimension than what he was thinking, but. There's um, the one when we played Leeds in January, February, and you've you've probably seen it when he goes out. It's a huge, huge game for them, but for us, it's just another. And that obviously went viral because Leeds beat Leicester, uh, but that's done done the rounds once again because obviously Leeds didn't go up. So I think he I think he's smart with the press. He knows what he's doing in some senses, um, but he was very um, full of praise for the fans. He used to speak about them. I think the local press would ask him ask him about a certain section of fans. Um, because obviously fans who don't know at Leicester, there's a there's a section of the singing section who they normally get behind the team a lot more than like the family, some say. And after the game, Enzo, if Leicester had won, Enzo would get the players and his staff to go over to them, applaud them and then come off. And that became quite a, a good thing at the club after a win. Um, so fans loved him for that. But in terms of being with the media, it's a bit hit and miss with fans. I think if fans get behind him and try and just appreciate that it's not boring football and there is an end goal to it. It's not just passing for the sake of it. There is genuinely a thought process behind it. Um, I know that it can look quite good when you're seeing like these these highlight reels that fans are making on Twitter of all of the best goals, but there is a, not a, 90% of the time there will be sequences of play when he's passing it around defence midfield, back to attack and then back to defence. And I think if Chelsea fans can kind of get beyond that vision, I think they'll have a good relationship with him because he he likes having a relationship with the fans. That was clear at Leicester. Yeah, I think that, I think that's one thing that's been been labelled at the last couple of managers, um, Graham Potter and, 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 and Pochettino. Um, good managers in their own right, but perhaps certainly outwardly, not big personalities, not that charismatic and, and certainly didn't really do an awful lot to try and make a connection and make a relationship with the fan base. So from what you're saying, you believe that that's something that Maresca will, will do from day one is try and form that relationship with the fan base and kind of make that connection and, and make them feel valued. Yeah, and I think you can look at Leicester's situation with when they went from Brendan Rodgers, who was pretty a mute character on the sideline. He 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 became renowned with the Leicester fans of just holding a little note and then clapping rather than showing any sort of emotion. So when Leicester went from that to then Enzo, who quite and on his first game, league game against Coventry when I think Dewsbury all scored two late goals the video of him celebrating on the touchline was used throughout the whole season just because it, it just seemed like he instantly got what it meant to be a local rival but also start the season with a win because it would have been very easy for them to lose that game against a team who just finished in the playoffs so yeah so you could definitely draw a comparison between that between Pochettino and Rogers. um like I said I, I believe there's, there's there's big things like the Stamford Bridge, the, the stadium and the, the fans are a lot closer to the dugout than they would be at the King Power. So that could play a part. But I think he's got the right balance between arrogance and respect to the fans where he will say how he feels, but he also won't disrespect the fans. I don't think I ever read anything he said last year and thought he's probably borderline. Yeah no, yeah, no, definitely. I think, I think I'm looking forward to having... So, I mean, not that it matters that much. As long as you're winning, I don't think fans are that fussed whether you're jumping on the touchline or what you're saying in, in, in the press and whatnot. But ultimately, I think it is important 
because that's kind of the insight you get as fans is them speaking in in, in press conferences and pre and post game. It is nice to have a little bit of charis- charisma uh, with a manager. So if he can bring that, I think that will certainly get uh, people on side. Obviously, in terms of how they set up at Leicester, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but generally speaking, a 4 3 3, two eights in, in Dealey and Dewsbury Hall, Winks sitting a little bit deeper, Pereira obviously inverting from that right hand side. Um, and then Mavadidi and Fatu were really important in terms of the wingers. Um, do you expect? How do you expect that style of play to transition to Chelsea? Of course, yes, he's going to have better players, but that doesn't always mean necessarily it's going to work. Do you think he's going to be able to implement that same style with the better quality at Chelsea quite quickly, or do you think with the step up it might take him a little bit of time? I think it would take a little bit of time, but I think Chelsea have been bang on with the movement of getting him getting him into the role because. Well, we're not even in June yet, and he's probably going to be announced, you'd like to think, fairly soon. Um, so Chelsea will have a full pre-season with him to get his ideas. And like I said earlier, Leicester, it didn't take him long to get his ideas um, with the Leicester players. I think it's slightly different because Leicester's, Leicester's players, were like their confidence were on the floor. They needed new ideas. And I know Dewsbury all came out and said, like, his ideas and how he wanted them to play just made them feel stupid. I think that may be a bit different at Chelsea because he's coming into a group of players who clearly like the new manager and um, the old manager, sorry, in Pochettino, it will have to convince them because a lot of football players, you get the odd occasion like the Ben Whites, but a lot of football players are football fans and they will know they have a fee- they have feelings about football themselves. So they'll know that Enzo's coming into this job with a with a lack of experience compared to the likes of Tuchel or Pochettino. So he, he, he will need time. I think we saw to, on the final day of the season, which obviously no one knew it was going to be Maresca's, but he tried something new where he had um, Hamza Chowdhury on the left and someone else on the right. I can't remember who it was. And he Hamza Chowdhury came in, so it was a left wing back coming in. And then you had the right back going into a back three. Rather than staying out, he made a back three of three central defenders, which we asked him about that. And he said he was just trying something new, um, which obviously left Leicester fans a, lot, a bit excited because he mentioned Wolfram and Diddy, thinking, oh, maybe he's going to stay. But that now looks like it's going to be up in the air with um, Reska leaving. So... Um, I do, yeah, to answer your question, I do think he will carry on his principles at Chelsea because we didn't see anything else apart from that. Um, even when, even in the March, April period when we lost to Ipswich, no, Millwall and Plymouth, there was calls to change it and he stuck with it. So I can't imagine he'll change it at Chelsea. Is, is that perhaps maybe a criticism of him? Is that because he's very much rigid in his plan A, um, you know, and if plan A is working well, there's no need for a plan B. But, you know, is, is that perhaps a concern that, we should maybe have is that 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 lack of a plan B if things aren't going right in a game or you know if you can see that things are going against you and perhaps it warrants a change but sticking with it regardless because those are your principles is there is there an element of stubbornness to him is he is he prepared to adapt in game if, if the situation warrants it or is it very much this is how I'm playing whatever's going on I'm going to stick with this because this is what this is what I believe uh, he's he's definitely a stubborn head coach that's that's something definite that I can say from his tactics how when you asked him a question in the press conference that he didn't want, want to answer, for example, the points deduction that Leicester got, um, well, the, the report of the points deduction, he he was very stubborn when it came to that. But in terms of his tactics, yeah, very stubborn. The, at the time, I think, especially me watching it from uh, with like a journalism hat, you saw it and just thought, right, well, he's not changing what's going on here. Like Leicester are chasing a goal and he's got two strikes on the bench. But nothing's being changed. But then when you look at it with the bigger picture, a lot of the time it is possession-based, short passes, open up space, but... As the game goes on and there is something to fight for, you will see spaces open up. You will see maybe the left back who's not meant to go forward will join attacks a bit more. You'll see a bit more tempo in their game. Maybe the wingers, will they won't necessarily swap wings, but they'll swap their game. So maybe Abdul will try and link up with the number eight a bit more. So I, I, I think Chelsea fans have got every reason to be worried about that stubbornness, but I do think he's got the options that Chelsea have got in that squad. Um, he was kind of limited to what he could do Um Less, especially because of Chelsea, call, recalling um, Cassidy. Um, mm. So he's kind of limited to what he could do at Leicester and he still did very well. So I think he's stubborn and I, but I think he's learned a lot. Um, and he is he has even admitted that he maybe could have made better decisions at certain times. I know he called when we lost to Leeds, he called that he shouldn't have took off Mavadidi. So he's, he's stubborn in his in-game tactics, but he's also very open for criticism. And it works at the end of the day for Leicester. And I think he's probably took a lot more positives from that season than negatives in terms of his style of play. No, definitely. And and in terms of like the Chelsea players that maybe you feel could benefit most from Maresca coming in, you know, obviously we, you see how important we've touched on how important the wingers were. 
you'd expect like the likes of your Mudricks and your Madaway case potentially to have a big role to play direct, one on one, running at full backs. Um, do, do you think Mudrick and Madaweke could have key roles? And also Cole Palmer, standout player last season for us, one of the best in the Premier League. How, how do you see his role potentially? Do you think it will change? I mean, I've seen some people maybe say that Palmer could drop a bit deeper and maybe even play that sort of number eight role that Dewsbury Hall played, or he could play off the right. Um, how, how do you see the wingers and, and, and Cole Palmer being utilised under Moresca? Because obviously Moresca's got a relationship with Palmer from the academy days at Man City as well. The Cole Palmer was quite an interesting one because obviously I watched quite a bit of Chelsea last season and he's obviously much better on the wing. But if I, if I correct me if I'm wrong, but he did he not play as a, like as a central camp for Man City under 21s a fair bit? Yeah, the 21s he played kind of as a 10. I think he got 13 in 16 uh, yeah. uh, with, with the 21s. But yeah, generally for Chelsea, he's operated off the right and yeah. sometime and then towards the end of the season when we got the five wins in a row. He, he operated a little bit more centrally because Madaweke was 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 doing really well uh, on, on the right-hand side. So I think he's done his best on the right, but he also can operate well centrally. Well, I think you could see maybe a Mudrick, Madaweke on each wing, like Mudrick on the left, Madaweke on the right, and then Palmer in the number eight. Because the two number eights, they are quite different in a way of how they play. So one would be a lot more offensive, which was our Dewsbury Hall, which I imagine would be the Cole Palmer maybe. And then you'd, if Gallagher stayed, you could see him do it because... Wilfred and Diddy used to drop in to help Winks and Pereira quite often, where Juice Ball would then sit in the pocket. Um, so you could probably see Gallagher doing that. Even Enzo Fernandez, I know there's been quite a lot of criticism about him um, this well the past six months. Obviously, he's been, he was playing with an injury, wasn't he? So yeah. probably a bit harsh, but he's probably got a big role as well. Um, but it will obviously depend on how Maresca judges the players in pre-season. I still think I, I, I'm a massive fan of the two wingers, Mudrick and Madaway, mm -hmm. just because I think. They've not really been given much of a chance, and I don't think that's through no fault of their own. More of the 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 manager, managerial changes. So, but then you've still got the Sterlings, you've still got the Jacksons. The I don't, the Inkunku is the, the big one. I can't decide what he's going to. Maybe he plays in Kunku and Palmer in the number eights. Um, on paper, you've got, you have got a, a brilliant uh, array of options, and I think Maresco will be licking his lips here because a front five of Madueki, Palmer, Inkunku, Mudrick, and then. If you sign a striker, whether that's Ossiman or whether you stick with Jackson or or you bring in someone else a little bit less known, he's got his attacks will be very good. It'll just be about linking up the two um, phases of play. And in, in terms of the goalkeeper, something that's been highlighted, you know, uh, I forget the goal, the Leicester goalkeeper's name now, but very important for Moresca in terms of build up, off, kind of that sweeper role, often filling in as, as an additional centre back. Um, Chelsea have been linked now with new goalkeepers potentially in the summer. Uh, having just signed two last summer. Um, you know, Moresco obviously wants someone that's very good with his feet. Um, Sanchez is not really ticking that box. Petrovic, good keeper, but again, ball playing, perhaps not his strength. Um, I guess the, the keeper, really important in terms of being able to be good with his feet. Yeah, and I think you could, I, if if you could put, if you wanted to put money on it, I'd say the goalkeeper will be the number one signing for, for Chelsea because he came into Leicester and we had, Alex Smith is Danny Ward, Daniel Iverson, so three goalkeepers. Um, Iverson finished the season in the Premier League. And he's not very good with his feet, but he's a good shot stopper. But Maresca still came in and very quickly brought in Mads Hermerson. Um, and it was very blatant from day one that he was going to be the number one. And we ended up finishing the season with three goalkeepers. Um, so he's not, he will want to change that. And the goalkeeper is not really a goalkeeper. He's, he, he has to be a good footballer. Um, and there is a lot of risk. I know that, that I don't know if you can remember or saw the goal when we played Birmingham a few months ago. Um, Hermanson's kicked the ball and it's hit the strike and gone in. And um, Leicester won that game. And after the game, Areska said, if he changes how he plays on about the goalkeeper, I'll drop him. Um, which is quite quite threatening for the goalkeeper, but it just shows what he wants his team to play and what his goalkeeper is required to do. And I think, like you said, Sanchez and um, Petrick are probably not the best with their feet. And I think if Chelsea are going to make a push for it this season, they're going to need to bring in a um, a ball playing goalkeeper, I've saw a few links already, which is no surprise. I won't be surprised if they looked at Hermerson. I think Maresca said countless times I've seen that he's a Premier League goalkeeper and he'll go to the top. Um, where it's a bit too soon, I hope that. I mean, I hope they don't take him, but um, or I know that the Valencia goalkeeper as well, yeah. whose name escapes me, he's been on Chelsea's um, radar as well. But yeah, I, I I could definitely say see a goalkeeper coming in for Chelsea for sure. And, and, and just to round out, obviously, Maresca backs himself. You know, he obviously believes in his ability. This this is a big step up. Let's make no mistake about it. Obviously, it's a far bigger risk for Chelsea than it is for Maresca himself. Um, 
firstly, just how good a coach manager do you think he can be? I know it's difficult to judge right now because there's very little, it's a very small body of work to go from. But firstly, how good do you think he can potentially be? And how do you see him doing at Chelsea? In terms of how I see him doing at Chelsea, I'll answer that one first. I, I think he'll do well, whether it will be better than what Pochettino did, I'm not unsure of. Um, but I mean, there's, I know you mentioned earlier the five year contract. If they see, if he sees that five years through, I do, I think he'll take Chelsea to the top. But with Todd Bowley and Clearleg, I don't know how much we can think of that. Uh, I do think that's a bit more of him trying to back himself up. So if he does get sat, he's got a bit of a, a payout. But in terms of his coaching, it looked like at the end of the season when Leicester lifted the trophy on their parade through the city centre, every player, you could at least once every player was having a photo with him, hugging him. There was having like a bit of a moment with him. Uh, and even players like Ian Acho, Ndidi, um, Pereira, like I mentioned earlier, wanted to leave the club last summer. And once they spoke to Maresco and got to know his style of play, decided to stay at the club. And I think that speaks volumes. And if he can do that to the likes of if he can convince Gallagher to sign a new deal and convince the club to keep him, then I think he'll already be making a lot of fans happy. So um, a, a very good man manager, very good tactics. Um, my only big, well, not big, but red flag would be, is it, I don't know whether it's a bit too soon for him, this kind of job, because, and I don't know if you've seen the reaction from Leicester fans, it's a kind of a bit like, well, if he goes, he goes, we're not, we're not too devastated about it. Whereas, you'd think, well, we've just been promoted. We're losing our manager. We should be a bit down about it. But I think a lot of fans were a bit anxious about how we do and how we style of play would be in the Premier League. Um, but I do think that's that's a bit of saltiness from the football fans' side of things and the fact that we are facing a point deduction. So, yeah, I think I think he'll, I think he'll do well for Chelsea. I think they'll get top four next season with them. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a big, I think that's a big ask, you know, like it's a rookie manager. This is going to have better players, but the top four is there for the taking. You know, Liverpool going to be in transition under slot, you know, not much between Chelsea, United, Newcastle, Spurs. How are Villa going to deal with the Champions League? The fourth spot's there for the taking. There's obviously the added thing of the Conference League, which Chelsea need to be winning. So there's that pressure there to deliver that trophy, but it's also... Could be, I don't say an easy route, but it's a route to a trophy in his first season that perhaps he might not have expected. Um, and I think there's room to be optimistic, but the overriding fear that I, I, I get from Chelsea fans and from myself as well is just like, it's just a massive gamble. And ultimately, he needs to be given the time to implement his ideas. We've had the same lines trotted out from the ownership, the directors and whatnot about uh, for the last three managerial appointments. So I, like, it's hard to sort of have any trust and any belief in the club that, this is going to be any different. Like, what's going to happen if we get to sort of April, May next season and the Champions League is, is is not on in terms of qualifying? Well, what happens then? Do they stick by him? Do they sack him like they would have done with previous managers? So there are some difficult decisions to make. It, it, it's going to be interesting. I think optimism is probably how I would how I would feel, but it's just a big step it, uh, into the unknown, uh, really. Uh, but I, I, just, I hope he does well. I think ultimately everyone's got to get behind him, support him. And realise that if this doesn't work out, it's not on. Well, it's not entirely on him. It's on the directors, the ownership for putting him in this position in the first place. It, it, it's, it's how I would view it. But George, thank you so much for your time, mate. It's been greatly appreciated. Fascinating insight on Moresco. If people want to check out your work and things, I'll link it all in the, in the description. Where, where should they go? Uh, yeah, so Twitter is just at Josh Holland LCFC. Um, but yeah, all football London stuff from not just me, but obviously all the all the other great guys covering the Maresca stuff, you Bobby Vincent, you Tom Kohler. So, yeah, all on Football London. Perfect, mate. Thank you so much, guys. I'll link all that in the description. Make sure you check it out. Make sure you follow Josh on Twitter. And, yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Smash the like, subscribe and all that stuff, and leave your thoughts in the comments below.